we had a look at the for loop. Now, for loop was, as I mentioned before, specifically for um, repeating commands from a certain number up to an up to a known number that we going to repeat. So in this case, it was from a certain number all the way up to 100. But there are times we do not know how often it is that a specific um, command is to be repeated. It might be an unknown amount, and this unknown amount might be um, something that could be associated with some expression, um, some algorithm, and um, we could have to sort of repeat, have to keep on repeating until that algorithm or that condition should become true. So, um, in this um, specific um, example, we will be entering a whole bunch of numbers into the computer and we want to add them all together. So, think about it that you go to some software application that might be used for an accountant or um, a kid that needs to add a whole bunch of numbers together um, or something that needs to do it, use it for statistics. And so they just need to enter the number, press enter, next number, press enter, needs to add all those numbers together. We don't know how many numbers there are that would have to be entered. It could be five, it could be 10, it could be a thousand, it could be a thousand six hundred twenty-nine. We don't know. But so what we're going to do is, is we're going to say, well, if the person should enter the value zero, that that's going to be our condition to um, that we've and entered in all the numbers. And the reason I'm saying equal to zero is that, I mean, what's, how difficult is it to add zero to a whole bunch of numbers? You'll probably find that nobody would really want to do that. So that is what is our condition that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so having a look again at our standard format of our, of our program, and I'm going to have int total is equal to zero. So total is going to be my variable that I'm going to be using to cut, to add everything together and to keep record of that. And then we're going to have some input, which is equal to zero. Again, input I'm going to be using as a variable that the user is going to be entering in. Okay, point if enter the number to, or the numbers to be added together. I'm going to also just say zero to exit. Okay, so we in, we having a user friendly um, program so that the user knows that when they type in zero, it will exit the the program. Okay, so let's just see what happens when we run that. So it's enter the number to be added, enter the numbers to be added together, zero to exit. Okay, so then we've got two new lines that will be um, indicated over there. Okay, so then we're going to have while open bracket input is not equal to zero. Okay, now again, I'm going to type this out and I'll explain to you in detail what um, each step is for and how it all fits together. Okay, I'm going to then have a scan if statement over here. It's going to be a percentage D. Um, and I mean, you're all familiar with how to use a scan if statement. So we want to have some input that the user will be entering in. So we've got to ampersand input over there. And then, as the user enters in the input, total is equal to total plus input. Okay, so you'll see over here, the value of in, of total that I've assigned to zero in the beginning is quite crucial because our, initially we want total be, to be equal to zero. Every time we add the new number we input to total, the initial condition or initial value of total needs to be zero. So that's where it's critical over here, where total value will be equal to zero initially. Okay, so um, 
we'll have that as our while loop and then essentially we will end with the printf statement which will be the total of the numbers added together is percentage d new line comma total okay so let's go through this and um, see what how it all operates so this while loop over here this is the the way that it's presented it's while and then there's some condition in brackets again there's no semicolon after while these conditions need to be in a complete bracket keep in mind with a while loop you can also have two conditions that need to be true so you can have an and or or operator um, that is possible but then again the complete set of um, conditions need to be in a single bracket so while the user does not enter in zero or, the, or, or input is not equal to zero it needs to keep on repeating that so it needs to keep on having the user to enter in a number the user will then enter it as as input or be stored in input and then it will calculate what the total value is so total is equal to total plus input so it will take the value that total is it will add the value of input to it and again it will store it into the variable total so whatever is on the right hand side the calculation will be will be performed and it will be stored in the left hand side variable which will be again total and it will keep on repeating this until the user inputs a zero and if that should be the case then it will go and it will output what the total value is of the numbers added so let's run it and see what happens okay the total number added together is zero so you see over here it doesn't even allow me to enter anything in can you see why maybe well the reason being is that the first condition for this while loop it came over here checked is input equal to zero and i've already assigned input equal to zero over there so it's crucial for me over here to say input is maybe equal to some number five um, just to make sure that it's not equal to zero specifically the first time I run this loop, I'm going to input the value of input. It's going to override this value of input that I've assigned the, um, as a temporary value. And then it will start adding it to the value of total. Okay, so let's type 5, 3, 6, 7, 0. So 5 plus 3 plus 6 plus 7 is equal to 21. Okay, so we can even go and keep on adding big numbers. So it can be 5, um, 23, um, 567. We can look at 2,946. We can look at 29,384. Um, we could have... Um, 638,926 we could even have a number of 4 million uh, and then zero so the total of those numbers added together is equal to 5 million four hundred and 10,145 okay so this can be useful if it's like I say if, you know we could expand on this program we can do statistics on it and stuff so a few things just to keep um, note over here with this specific example that we've looked at we've um, had to have a condition that needs to be taken into account we don't know how many times this loop has to happen but if this condition should become true, then it would um, it, it would stop. Okay, so this command will keep on running while this condition is true. As soon as this condition is true, it stops this this segment of um, statements between the curly brackets and it continues with the program. We also saw that the value of input 
um, can't be equal to zero in this specific example. So this shows how planning in your programming is quite important um, because often it is that we do assign a value of zero in the beginning um, just because it becomes the norm and um, we don't take, in, take into account that these conditions could cause that um, the program could maybe not um, function as we um, intend to be. Okay, and then again we just had to look at adding values together or variables together and assign it again into the variable that's on the left hand side. Okay, so up to now we've essentially looked at all the basics of programming and um, for numerical problem solving um, programming. Um, a lot with the commands, or well, a lot can be done with the commands that we've looked up at, at um, up to this stage. We will be looking at a few more um, and then um, we'll be starting to look at how to go about solving problems. But um, be familiar with the basic tools. Once you know these basic tools, you can actually solve quite a lot of problems, um, if not all of them. Um, and a lot of the problems and engineering problems and um, advanced problems I've had to deal with, I've had to been able, I've been able to solve them with these basic commands up to what we've done up to now.